From ancient times to modern society, civilization owes much of its essential products, as well as its luxuries, to the hard work of the mining industry. From the cars we drive to the smartphones and laptops we use every day, to life-saving medical devices and medications, to clean energy and low-carbon technologies for wind, solar power, and batteries, our society depends on mining for the materials that continue to shape the world around us. We have a saying that if it can't be grown, it has to be mined. Mining is as important to humanity as agriculture is. It is very important for economies. For example, in North America, it generates over $150 billion a year from uh, the extraction of minerals. And for as long as we can remember, mining has been uh, very much part of each and every culture going back to ancient times. In Canada, the spirit of exploration is alive and well. Historically a dominant force in the global mining industry, Canada continues to be a world leader in mining production, finance, safety and sustainability. Here in Beardmore, Ontario, 220 kilometers northeast of Thunder Bay, Lorion Mineral Exploration is rediscovering the rich history of the Sturgeon River project. Behind me is the footings of the historic Quebec Sturgeon River mine, which operated between 1936 and 1942, producing 73,000 ounces of gold and 16,000 ounces of silver from 145,000 tons which were mined from the underground. Originally mined in 1936 and abandoned during World War II, today the region is experiencing a rebirth through the presence and activity of the Ishkade Gold Polymetallic Project. When the war effort interrupted operations and men were interred to support the war effort, leaving behind a very valuable asset at what is today the Ishkade Project and a springboard for the future mineralization of the Ishkade property. Named in collaboration with the area's five Aboriginal groups, the Ishkade name, which means fire or flint rock, signifies the first mining techniques in the area and celebrates the communities and their connection with their heritage lands. Our long-term vision with the Ishkade project is to create significant jobs in order to support the area and the region and to provide benefit opportunities for our First Nation groups and communities. With excellent surface and near-surface exposure, access to roads and services, and an ideal location in one of the most geopolitically friendly mining regions in the world, the Ishkade project is uniquely positioned to advance from the discovery stage to value creation for its stakeholders. The Ishkade is unique. It's located in one of the most geopolitically friendly environments in the world. Located in northern Ontario, it hosts about 47 square kilometers of excellent exploration potential. The Ishkade is one of those few remaining projects with low hanging fruit, which means that our exposure of mineralization to surface is fairly widespread and is easily accessible for future mining opportunities. With Ishkade's potential projected to bring much needed growth to the surrounding region, Lorian's textbook mineralization in this unique environment is guided by 3D GIS geology aimed at strategic exploration and targeted drilling. So on a project like the Ishkade, generally what happens is that a prospector will find a sample on surface uh, that runs good assays for whatever element, be it gold, copper, zinc, silver. And one of the other big advantages that we have on the Ishkade is that we've got large trenched areas like this where we can do channel sampling. The advantage of a channel sample is you can do a line right across the outcrop uh, that's similar enough in assays to diamond drilling and that can help you understand what's on surface and then with the drilling you can correlate a depth. Followed through with trenching, stripping, sampling for geochemical analysis, through to mapping with the end goal of going through and doing drilling. Well, channel sampling, what it involves is it's similar enough to drilling in that you're getting a long linear trend of rock. And a channel saw, what it is, is it's a double bladed saw that cuts a groove within the rock uh, on the order of say a meter long which is then sent for assaying. And, and when you connect several of these channel samples along, it can basically equate to a drill hole. Another parameter is to do with geophysics. Um, and the advantage of geophysics is it's, it's an indirect method, meaning that you don't have to be there. Um, but what geophysics can help you do is outline other areas of further potential um, with the idea of then of clearing them off uh, and correlating with, with known structures on surface. 
The idea being that through infill drilling, uh, we're working towards defining the inferred or indicated mineral resource uh, with the idea of proceeding to feasibility studies for mineral development. The reality of the situation is that mining will create a footprint. Lorien is not in the current situation. We are still in an exploration mode. However, as we move forward to mining in the future, it is absolutely certain that we will be extremely well regulated in our approach to our mining methods, to how we reclaim our project at the end of the mine life. Considering itself fortunate to be in the position they are, Lorian believes that it has only scratched the surface of what appears to be a significant gold and polymetallic discovery. As Lorian evolves from explorer to miner, the focus will remain the same, to be an example of what the future of mining should look like. We have a very strategic approach to our exploration project, to take it from the exploration stage to development, to the, the point where we can take it to production, our extensive field work to date has identified a fairly significant system of both gold and base metals. The world is going to see a very critical demand in both gold and, and base metals. We're in a very specific gold cycle and this is an ideal opportunity for Lorien to match its objective and ride this gold cycle and create value for itself and its shareholders. To find out more about the Ishkade project and Lorian mineral exploration, please visit lorian.ca.